below, my friends. Well, if this doesn't feel like a throwback to 2020, <laughs> or I guess 2021 to some extent, kind of. Hello, friends. I completely forgot to get a drink today, so I don't have one to pop open, but hello, friends. Melissa, good to see you. Kieran, Marty, Cesarian, Natasha, Love Leopard, good afternoon. Sadie, good to see you. Quiet Love. Isaac, hello, comma, good evening. Night Elf, good to see you. Wumbo Man, hello, Brother Orca, Jif, Poppy, hello. Valkyrie, good to see you. Phoenix, hello. Chaco, hello. Spence, good afternoon. It's great to have you all here on this bright, sunny afternoon. Yeah, I stopped for a long time, Cesarean, a long time. And I am still sort of tentative in my waiting in. But we'll see. Neuro, good to see you, bud. I hope you're doing well. What's up, Mia? Not sunny for me? No? It's, it's cold and sunny here. I haven't played Destiny since Peter Dinklage was ghost voice actor, so it's been a while. I have many, many hours in Destiny, but I took, I took, I'd say I've taken almost a year off. I actually don't really remember when I, when I last played. I, I mean, this used to be literally 90% of every stream I ever played was Destiny. So, hello, Shelves. So the, those of you that have never seen this before, we, we play Destiny and we chat and I barely play pay attention to the game while we while we talk. I just I literally just converse with chat the whole way through. So unless things get like crazy hairy and intense, but I can talk and play Destiny at the same time. It's super easy for me. It's gonna be interesting to get back on that bike today and see what it's like. But I'm just here to sort of chill and chat with all of you this afternoon. So uh, I know many of you during the afternoon streams, you throw me on in the background and keep you company at work or wherever you may be, and that's cool. Watched Jared play this for a million hours the other night. Yep. Uh, Jared's back into it. Sean's back into it. Joe's back into it. Uh, and I have a sense that Friday with the fellas for a while here might be Destiny-themed. So I got to catch up. Speaking of the tire game, the charity tire game is actually coming back in March. March is traditionally the month that we do it. We have already started the planning process. This year, the proceeds are going to go to benefit the Trevor Project. So we're going to help our LGBTQIA plus folks out. But there will be rainbow themed merch there will be limited edition merch available for that stream all revenue from any merch sales during that stream will be donated so it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool and that'll be here in march we'll be sure to promo it before it gets here it'll probably be towards the end of the month but i'm really excited about it so the the uh the charity tire game is always a lot of fun we raised over $3,000 last year. It was really cool. Bianca, good to see you, friend. I hope you're doing well. My brother and his friends are big Destiny fans, but the looter shooter gameplay loop never appealed to me. I enjoy watching it, though. It's not for everybody. I enjoy looter shooters when they're good. Like, The Division, Destiny, I mean, those games are a lot of fun for me when, when they're in a good place. I have been... I've been very tentative with Destiny over the last several months, and so. Let's see. 
I just wanted to stop in and say I started playing the campaign last night and I'm not too far in, so I don't want to be spoiled. Totally understandable. I skip all the cutscenes for whatever it's worth. I don't really pay attention to the story in Destiny while I'm going through it. I always go back afterwards. Update. After so many months, the second half of the LT disability claim I've gone through hell with was approved this morning. Thank you for your support over these months. I am really glad to hear that, Shelbs. I'm really glad to hear that. Wanted to say that I've been loving the Cyberpunk VODs. I can't wait to receive a Takamura mug. Thanks for ordering one, Poppy. I really appreciate it. Macy's here for her first Uncle Ryan stream. I love that. Hello, Macy. You fabulous human. Your dad's pretty cool. Haven't been able to catch a stream in a while, but have some time off work, so this works well for me. Well, it's wonderful. Wonderful to have you here, Bianca. I hope you've been enjoying Witch Queen. I'm going to kind of jump in here while we're all chatting. Because again, sometimes people are like, wait a second, he's going to play the game. He's not going to see us. I'll see you. Very easy game for me to play and talk at the same time, which is really nice. What's up, Ollie? <laughs> What's up, Matt? Good to see you, man. All right, there we go. Make sure this. Make sure this is good. I'll be on here for a couple hours. I'm just here to chill a little bit. It's kind of nice. I've this week, man. This week's been. It's nice to just kind of screw around and play some Destiny with all of you. What's your class in light main? I am a hunter main. Surprise, surprise. And I have been running... Uh, I've been running Night Stalker uh, with six Coyote. Secession, Arctic Haze, and Anarchy. And I have been burning through the campaign with little issue, which has been pretty nice. Also, how nice is it to have a Destiny stream in 1440p? Come on now. I mean, that, that is one thing that's exciting about doing this on YouTube is... We got real nice, high-quality stuff today. I went to my first therapy session. It was super interesting, and she said what I called my intrusive thoughts. Not really intrusive, which I didn't like, but other than that, it was fine. It's interesting. An interesting thing to say in the first session, but you guys will ease into it, Mia. Um, I hope it ends up working out really well for you. Social Club Meetup form just went live for the Chicago Star Trek Con. Looking forward to seeing people I've met only over, over Zoom. That's super exciting, Melissa. I'm excited for you. Zay, good to see you. I forgot there would be a reasonable hour stream and came to a pleasant surprise. What's up, Floaty? Y yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm not I'm not paying too much attention to the campaign. So those of you that are like, oh, what's going on in the campaign? No idea. No idea. All I know is that the hives have go the hive has ghosts. That's about it. Lurking as I head home. What's up, Rosalind? Good to see you, friend. Hello, Taylor. Good to have you here, friends. It is super important whenever I play Destiny that you tag me if you want me to make sure that I read what you say. Uh, because if you don't tag me, then we're in trouble. Also, help uh, help me out with volume. I want to make sure I've got music going in the background, but I also want to make sure that my voice is not being drowned out by the gunplay, which sometimes happens. What's up, Frugal? I am indeed. I am indeed. We're get, we're back to our uh, back to old school. Back to our roots. This is probably what the Friday with the fellas are going to consist of for a while, and. Feeling of stream is giving me 2020, 2021 vibes. I know. I know. It's Destiny's like riding a bike, man. Destiny and World of Warcraft. I can I can hop in and play like I just played it yesterday. 
Music's a bit loud for me. Requires deep sight tier three. Okay. Clarity is so good, right? I've never seen any gameplay of Destiny at all. This is interesting. Oh man, you're in for a treat. I'm playing the campaign on Legendary, which I'm sure many of you would imagine, which means that it's a little bit harder. There's things missing like radar and the enemies have tougher shields. And it's, been, it's been pretty fun so far. What's going on in the campaign? No idea. That's my mood with Destiny 2. I just mentally check out for the story in this game. Yeah, I do too. I, I have no interest in it. The division I, I care about, I find the division to be interesting when I play it, but Destiny, I just, I, I care in hindsight. Like, I have all the grimoire books and stuff that Bungie sells, but. Based on everyone's comments, I'm very tempted to give Witch Queen a try. I, you know, Destiny's always tricky when it first comes out with an expansion because everybody gets really excited about the expansion. Everybody loves it. And then you give it like four weeks and everybody hates it. And they start bitching about stuff because a lot of people know life it for a while, and then they're like, "Wait, there's nothing else to do." We found must be connected to how Sabathun got the light. Played some of Destiny one and two, never finished either one. They're hard games to finish, so to speak. He is hidden in the pattern of the runes. Of course, they're going to give me a puzzle right at the outset here. Okay. <laughs> no idea. I onboarded my first ever team member yesterday. Was thankful for my manager trusting me within the short time to do that. But turns out she already tendered her registration last night. So that's fantastic. Look at you, Mia. You're like... You're like what? Just over a month in and you're already just like kicking ass over there? Love to hear about that. I just finished campaign yesterday and it was a blast. Hope you're enjoying it. It's been pretty fun so far. It seems like Bungie wanted to make sure that the missions are a little more drawn out. There's a lot less, like, back and forth, which is kind of nice. Like, I've appreciated that they've really added some continuity to the campaign. So, like, you kind of, you, you don't, you don't just, like, do one mission, go back to orbit, do another mission, go back to orbit. Like, you're actually going through and progressing through something which is nice they kind of had this like cookie cutter formula for a long time with this stuff that i've i got frustrated with my frustrations with destiny for a long time like what and why i quit for so long was because it felt like every single season was just the same thing in a different shell so i'm really hoping that there's like more variety and i get it that like you know it's not like Destiny's gonna be groundbreaking every time it comes out, but it got so stale for me. So, you know, here's hoping. Oh, resignation. She quit already. Oh, I thought you said registration. Okay. She already tendered her resignation last night. Weird. So, wait, they got hired and then immediately resigned? 
interesting. I read registration, my bad. It's all mixed up sometimes, you know? My bad. I will never be the taken queen. I refuse Pretty much to my interesting. To my brother I'm always fascinated when people do that. Like when people are like, oh yeah, I'm in, and then they're like, nah, never mind. I'm out. Like, what a waste of company resources, man. Spent one day onboarding and then said she wasn't a good fit. At the same time, I will say, if a person can identify that, I suppose that's probably decent enough because then you don't have to worry about a person, like, being at odds with a person the entire time that you're they're there. But What's up, Confused? Good to see you, friend. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for popping in. Good to have you all here today. We don't really know why. We think she was not up to the challenges of the job. Oh, so like one of those things where like you don't really know what the job entails until you start getting onboarded and then a person's like, okay, never mind. Never mind. Blah, 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 blah. Do not care. Sabathun. Don't care. I just want to shoot stuff. Do you have any general tips for dealing with performance anxiety at work? It's a hard one, John, because, or I hope I'm saying that right, John. Um, that's a hard one because it depends on what, like how the anxiety is affecting a person's performance. I think something that people sometimes construct around performance at work is that they think that they're supposed to be, like that anxiety is supposed to be absent. And that's not the way that it works. So I think it's important to focus on what a person can control. And like, what can you control? Is there any assistance you need from somebody? And is the anxiety actually accurate? Meaning, are you spending a lot of time with what ifs? Or are you actually looking at your performance and seeing hard data that it's not where it's supposed to be so acknowledging the anxiety i think is really important and then focusing on how do we respond to it and what do we do with it and if that means needing some extra training or some extra assistance it's okay to ask for that no idea who this feminine character is who's talking about not being next taken queen but i like her voice Solid voice actress, but yeah, not, don't care what she has to say. Do you have any tips for somebody who wants to go to therapy but keeps procrastinating on it? I want to go. I think I'm ready, but I keep delaying it for some reason. Just go. All procrastination is is anxiety avoidance. That's all it is. So it's not about the therapy. It's about the anxiety associated with it. You literally can't go to therapy until you go to therapy. So break it down into small manageable goals. Make the call. Um, you're going to have to make the call and go while anxious. If you're waiting for anxiety to go away, you're going to wait forever. You just got to go. I, there's no, there's no like one simple trick that makes this all better. That makes that easier. Like literally the choice to put it off is a choice. So choose to do the thing that you would do after you're done waiting and do it now. Job description makes it sound a lot easier than it is, and when you finally get into it, it's really overwhelming on day one. Well, I mean, then, you know, good on that person for deciding that it wasn't for them, you know? I suppose better that than wasting your time. What's up, Jomeo? Good to see you. Some companies offer new hires money like 2000 they would rather quit on the spot after they learn the job duties involved, so they only get people who want to be there. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. What's up, Ariels? Good to see you. Home sweet home. Time to get comfy. Welcome home, Roslyn. This sucks that it was the first person I onboarded. Well, i assuming, Mia, that it has nothing to do with you and has everything to do with the job and that person's perception of it. But I can see why that would kind of sting, right? It's like, oh, I onboarded this person. Oh, already gone. <laughs> Like, I can see why that would be easy to personalize, but. <laughs> it can only go up from there, right? Like, you can't really get any worse.
Luckily, my manager was chill about it. I just, I mean, I would find that super weird if a manager got shitty about that. Like, oh yeah, this person made a decision to leave. They didn't cite you as being the reason, and you're at fault. I mean, I know companies can pull that shit sometimes, but... What's up, Red? Good to see you, friend. I hope you're doing well. Always wonderful to see you in chat. Putt Dog, good to see you as well. Those of you that are OGs, you're probably like, holy shit, we're back in the saddle. Other than finding out two hours before my interview today that the position had already been filled and the interview is no longer necessary, that sucks. That really sucks. What a, I, you know, that kind of thing is such a time waster. My, uh, my wife got pissed off yesterday because my wife was supposed to get her hair done yesterday and her hairdresser canceled on her and it was the third time in a row that her hairdressers bailed on her and she literally um, has, so like she literally was gonna move clients over from Wednesday, from Friday to yesterday because she has a friend coming into town that she wants to hang out with and spend a lot of time with. And uh, her hairdresser just totally bailed. And she was so pissed. And it was like such a waste of her time. And I just, you know, wasting, wasting time is a... A hard one to, hard one to advocate for. And then when and then when Allie tried to address it with her, she's like, "Look, are Wednesdays just bad for you? Like, do you need do we need to meet on a different day?" Her hairdresser just ghosted her. Need to normalize quitting jobs? Oh, absolutely. I agree with that completely. People stay in jobs way longer than they should. But I also think we have to acknowledge that like one of the problems is in the United States is employment is tied to a lot of things, including health insurance. So there are many circumstances where people get trapped into staying at their job because it's hard to find an alternative job. There's not a lot of time to be able to apply for a job while you're currently employed. And you may need the benefits from your job and you can't really afford to go insurance-less. Like there's a lot of issues with the way that we currently do things here in the United States at least. back to the gym for the first time in months yesterday my entire body it's sore I'm proud of myself for finally getting back into working out good for you Jeff it's awesome it's a big step Transitioning is hard also. It is. It really is. Um, you know, I I think if you're in a position where you can apply for other jobs while you are currently employed, that's really the ideal scenario. Like when I left my job at Northwestern, I had already gone and uh, basically secured something before I left. Because then I knew that I had that in the bag. And if I hadn't done that, it would have been a hell of a lot scarier because, you know, you just, and I had to, I had to make sure that like my wife and I were still okay with insurance, that I could switch to hers. Like it was just a whole thing. Oh boy. to start a new job as things are but I need to get out of this one I'm just super tired of people acting like someone quitting their job early because they don't like it in negative reflection of that person yeah no I mean I I certainly agree with that like if you if you're quitting a job because it's not good for your mental health like yeah you absolutely I, 
I respect the person for making that decision because it's a hard one to make. I think if people are chronically leaving jobs because they have low distress tolerance, that's a different story, right? So like that's the thing though, is that we have to we have to always have context taken into account with these things. Um, because you know, sometimes it may actually be a lack of consideration. Sometimes it's because that person has legitimately made sure to take care of their mental health. Like, I'm always for, you know, screw the company, not the employees. But, you know, there are times where I think, you know, a person would do well to hang in there because they're actually not doing themselves any favors by um, bailing early when it becomes something that's chronic and like a way of managing anxiety. Prior to tag, what's so interesting about the whole situation is that I knew beforehand that I didn't think she would work out. I was literally saying I hoped she would before going in. Isn't it funny how you can get a sense sometimes of that kind of thing? What's up, Takiro? Good to see you, friend. Thanks for popping in. I certainly agree. Like, look, I'm all for people taking care of their mental health. I'm all for people leaving toxic work environments, and it's impossible to know what a work environment is going to be like before you get there. Um, I, so I, I am all for people uh, taking care of themselves as best they need to. I do think it's important to, as best you can, do your research, sort of understand what the impact of that is. If you can give people notice, that's usually pretty cool because, you know, the thing is, is like, Oftentimes companies, the real issue is the leadership. It's not the people that are working there. And I, I'm not generally a fan of if you screw people over when you go, if there's flexibility to potentially stay just maybe a hair longer so that you can you know, ensure that your leaving is you're not going to like screw over people who are maybe struggling as much as you are but again these are all delicate things like these are things that you can't really talk about in a vacuum like there's so much context that goes into people staying at jobs leaving at jobs ultimately at the end of the day you got to do what's right for you and other people telling you their opinion on it only matters in so far as that person matters to you like there are certain circumstances where leaving a job immediately would make complete sense. There are certain circumstances where, you know, maybe we stick it out a little bit longer. And, you know, I'm not the one to decide whether that's the right decision for somebody. That's the decision so, they have to make. Tell us more about this temple. How do you know There's a paywall after a certain number of searches on Glassdoor? That's ridiculous. So Savathun built a mausoleum for her younger self, then abandoned. Father found a reason to quit every job he had, eventually refused to get a job at all, and since I know him so much like him in the worst ways, I don't want to look like him. Well, again, what it looks like to some extent only matters in context, but yeah, I mean I, I get it. Again, there's there are perfectly good reasons to leave employment. Like I'm I'm certainly not gonna be the arbiter of of that decision for folks.
this is where the concept of both ends is just it's important to consider right like that one a person can make a decision that's good for them and also that decision can harm other folks and you know we do what we all do our best at the end of the day our ups like managers are usually what makes a real difference so literally the number one reason people leave their places of employment is because of management People, people rarely leave because of the job. They usually leave because management is awful. And because the people in positions of power either don't get it or are not treating them well or you know, whatever it may be. And I would say from my own experience, that's true. Like there have been places where like the job sucked, but the people I worked with were awesome. So I was like, yeah, no, I'll, I can stick it out. And there have been times where the job was awesome and the people I worked with and the management was so terrible that like there was no way I was going to stick it out. You know? Like it's kind of amazing. Like the relationship aspect of jobs is so important. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all humans and having some connection to what we're doing is important, but who we work with is generally going to override the rest of it. And so that's why I always hold people in managerial positions accountable to do, to do right by the folks that work for them and to be mindful of that. Also an employee market right now, so if you can get more money elsewhere, do it. Yeah, there's a lot of places that are hurting for um, hurting for employment. And you know what's funny is we we look at that. So many places are quick to look at um, people not applying for jobs, and they're like, "Well, what's wrong with all these people that are applying for jobs?" Or, or aren't applying for jobs. And the reality is, like, maybe your offer sucks. Maybe the job that you are offering to folks and the compensation for what you're asking them to do is completely inappropriate and terrible. And you should maybe look at your company hiring practices and what you are doing and what the job entails and what the compensation package is. Like, I really hate that, particularly in the United States, we have a tendency to blame employees and subordinates for issues as opposed to people in positions of power. Like, people are like, why is nobody applying to my job? It's like, because you're paying $5 an hour for a bunch of grunt work. Who the hell in their right mind would want to would wanna do that? Maybe your compensation and benefits package sucks. Because I'm going to tell you right now, friends, uh, being providing benefits and stuff for employees is not... Um, it's, it's, it's not the huge squeeze that everybody makes it out to be. Like, I literally own a business. We offer better benefits than probably any therapy practice that I know of. And our business is still... I mean, not in an insane way, but it's still profitable. Like you can compensate people fairly and still make money. What happens is you start to see the stratification of income and you start to see it all get hoarded at the top. And that's really when you start having some serious issues. Pay the folks that do the work. Anyway. The thing I've become increasingly passionate about in my life. It makes me sound kind of old, but... manager and I've had to explain this to our owners multiple times and they still don't understand. Oh, I'm sure they understand. I'm sure they understand. It's so just a matter if you actually want to do anything about it. It's... it's quite a sight, isn't it? Can't accuse Sabathun of being too humble. I don't know. 
We do it all backwards in, here in the States. And I know it's not just the United States that does it backwards. It's backwards in a lot of places, but... serious problem with hyper individualism with everything in general i mean we just have a lot of problems they're not all solvable overnight but yeah i don't know just like i think about so like when we started our therapy practice ellie and i were it was really important to us that we have an environment that people actually want to work in, that we provide fair benefits, fair compensation. You know, just because people that work for us don't have licenses doesn't mean that we have to absolutely, you know, screw them out of being fairly compensated. There's a lot of, uh, in the therapy world, for example, there's a lot of really, uh, really snaky stuff where therapists do a shitload of work, they're held to ridiculous standards, and they are not compensated well at all. And their benefits are shitty and everything else. And it's something that Allie and I were like, okay, we need to make sure that we figure out how to make an environment where you know, folks are going to want to work for us. And they're going to feel like when they work for us, they are fairly compensated for what they do. And honestly, chat, it has not been that hard to do. It really hasn't. And it's really shed a lot of light for me on just how ridiculous it can be. You know, that's what's kind of going on in um, in baseball right now. There's a whole labor dispute right now in baseball. Major League Baseball is making more money than it ever has, and player salaries have gone down. And that's happening in a lot of places. And so the players are kind of like, what the hell, man? Like... We're doing all the work, we're bringing the product, and we're not being, we're not seeing compensation that's commensurate with the increase in revenue that's happening. What the hell, like, what is that about? And, you know, luckily, you know, baseball has a players' union, but you know, not a lot of people have the luxury of a union to be able to help them out and negotiate those things and really make sure that they're compensated properly for what it is that they're doing and it just it, it really starts to suck when you realize it's not that hard to do a lot of nonprofit health orgs in san francisco only pay frontline support staff a few dollars above minimum wage for a lot more involved in complex work it said yeah i mean nonprofits are hard because nonprofits you are really kind of slave to the amount of money that you can bring in. It's a little bit of a different vibe than like for profit where you're seeing huge, you know, revenue margins and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, even that, that still sucks. Most places benefits is a lie. My old workplace provided private health care, but when I finally mustered up the courage and tried to sign up for therapy they were offering, they rejected me. Because they said my problem was just an, was not a new one and a pre-existing condition. So in the end, it was all a bunch of BS. Yeah, no, that stuff is terrible. That stuff is terrible. Insurance and employers and stuff should not be the ones that are in charge of making those kinds of decisions. Oh, man, this area sucks. Didn't want to use that, but... who provide capital are more important than the people who provide the labor <laughs> sarcasm I, I see i see the slash s on that i worked as a delivery driver last year i worked 12 hour nights and it sucked but i needed money then one night i had to deliver someone i was in an abusive relationship with in the past oh my god that 
is awful, Jim. I hope that wasn't too uh, traumatic for you. I'm almost jealous of my stepdad. He's going into a new job with a baseline pay that's higher than his old job, but I know he put in the work for it. Totally deserves the lateral move. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for compensating people who have put their time in, but... I mean, a perfect case and example. Uh, when I worked at Northwestern as a assistant professor, uh, I did a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, arguably... I mean, at least as much, if not slightly more, than a lot of the other folks that I worked with. And that's not a slight on them. Everybody that I worked with worked really hard. So it's I'm not, I'm not saying that they didn't work hard. But I worked as hard, had as many hours, as many responsibilities as anybody else in that program did. And I was compensated at half of what the next highest person on the faculty was compensated at half all because I was new and young and to me that's insane right like there should be compensation that's relative to the work that you're doing and an acknowledgement that like yeah okay fine I'm new and I'm young but that doesn't change the fact that I'm doing the same amount of work and that it's asinine that we would that I would be at half. I mean, I understand if I was at like 80% or something like that, because it's like, yeah, well, you know, you gotta you gotta work here a few years before we're gonna compensate you the same way. I can totally understand that. But like the amount of people where that happens, right? Like, and then when I was when I resigned, there were three people hired to replace me. Three people. So three salaries replaced what I did. You consider not being new and young? I, you know, I really worked at it. I really did. I worked really hard to not be new and young. For whatever reason, it just... This would just didn't work out for me. What's up, Knuckle Basket? Basically of the mind that I'm not going to be... strong-armed into doing things that I'm not being compensated to do. It's a really good... Uh, a really good stance to take and it's unfortunately at times can be a slightly risky one because in certain and I, again i'm this is not me arguing with you lemonade i i totally respect that perspective um it's hard because when people work in like you know replaceable jobs and people are able you know companies are able to set you up to be disposable sometimes having really good boundaries like that uh can lead to issues but if that's something that you're prepared to do, I, I respect it, right? Like, I'm all for integrity. I think integrity is something that nobody else is going to monitor for you. And you've got to be boundaried about the things that matter to you and your values. Like, I really believe that. And, I, you know, I admire people who will make a tough decision because of integrity. Benefits are rough. Can't wait to leave my current job, but we're trying for a baby right now, and leaving would mean starting over at a new place for maternity leave. Ah, uh, yes. Old United States maternity leave. Bridges take forever. What's up, Virgo? Good to see ya. Really glad to have you all here today. Thank you for taking some time to hang out and kick it old school and play some Destiny with me while we chat about things that affect so many of us. Oh, boy. Try to stay away from all these damn screeds.
always forget about reasonable hour streams. I know many do. I put the notification up late. I got tied up with some work stuff today, so I was a little bit later than I normally am. I usually like to be live at one, but. Grew up in a very volatile and absolute abusive house, so it really taught me how to identify when I deserve better than what I'm getting. Good for you, Lemonade. I respect that a lot. Luckily, they didn't recognize me, but I was still freaked by it. When I got back, I asked if I could have a few minutes to myself, and they told me to wait for my break, so I quit on the spot. Jesus. That sounds very Amazonian. Yeah, God forbid you have a couple minutes to collect yourself so you can do your job well, right? God. Hate it. Hate it. Hate when I hear stuff like that, man. Love the contrast between the calming, relaxing music and the dialogue you have with chat while you're obliterating alien creatures. It's what we do here with Destiny, baby. This is this is what 90% of the stream used to be like. I don't know. Destiny, in a lot of ways, like when you're clicking on all cylinders, can be pretty meditative. Like I just, I, I'm like mindlessly playing this. got a new job as a creative director of a small company that makes community outreach vehicles. I get treated all right, but I hate driving out of the city. Makes sense. I have a co-worker that I've had to nicely and verbally smack down because he's like, Roz, why didn't you get more of this bagel? Because you ass, I get extra if the slicer utterly shreds the first. <laughs> oh boy. That's fun. Also, chat, I am completely sight reading this. Um, I have not played this campaign, so literally everything we're doing, I'm doing for the first time. We're learning as we go here. Oh, hello. There we go. Oh, my doctor's office today about my insurance wanting more info to justify MRI. Luckily, lady on the phone said they went ahead and approved it now. Good. Let's try this again. Are these guys with the lanterns? Brutal. Also, me not having void? Not great. That guy really likes to move around, doesn't he? Oh, shit. Oh. Okie dokie. Shit, man, they're still chasing me even though I'm invisible. Oh my god. Oh, this is gonna be rough. Listen to a podcast that talked about Instagram therapists and how problematic the followings can become. Made me really appreciate how responsible you are with what you share on stream. Sadie, I appreciate you saying that a lot. Uh yeah. So the thing that gets really tricky about that stuff is, you know, you, you can have almost cult like followings sometimes around that stuff. Um, you really get like kind of cult of personality and it's backed up with this idea that you know because that person is a is a therapist um, they are really legitimate to follow and people will like fight to the death for the honor of the people they follow and if a therapist is out there giving um, we'll call it advice or information that is popular instead of legitimate uh, we really see some problems. So, yeah, I, I mean, I recognize that I am a therapist that is in the public eye, but that is why it is very important for folks like me to take their role very seriously 
and do the right thing 100% of the time. But I really do appreciate that. I'm dead. Dude, these guys being void, I'm going to have to switch weapons because... I just, like, I gotta be able to cut through their shields. I, I can't be sitting here. Oh, maybe. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, my God. Oh, all right, bear with me for a second here, chat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please, please, please die. Please die. Please die. Yes. Okay. Night you rated Jared on Twitch. I said the only experience I had with Destiny is your tire stream. He was shocked and laughed. Okay, I see why you would have no idea what's going on. Yeah, if you've only ever seen the tire stream, that would make complete sense why you're not sure what's up. Oh, baby. I have to hit four full weapon with a scout. Uh, um, unrelenting adrenaline junkie. I don't think of how you found the way forward. Find to upgrade my anarchy. Where Sabathun has concealed the path. It's been pretty solid. I think about how hardcore you are about establishing and maintaining boundaries. It really helps not fall into that trap that other therapists and influencers do. Yes, because I take it very, very, very seriously. Legendary D2 is spicy. I'm actually kind of glad that they did a uh, legendary campaign. I I will say that that makes this a lot more fun because you really got to, like, pay attention. What's up, Fuego? Good to see you, dude. Give me that worm. Campaign is lots of fun. Just finished it last night with my friend. Outlast the illusion. What, what the hell is Riven do? Wait. Wh what? 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 What's up, Riven? I don't even know what to shoot. I would think it would be mouth. There we go. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. This will be fun. Wait a minute. I'm gonna have to crawl into its heart like we did with uh, with Riven back in the day. This is ridiculous. 
This is absolutely ridiculous. Was not expecting this. Like, I'm gonna run out of ammo. There we go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Leave. Thank you. Oh no. Oh no, so many screams. Backing up. There we go. By the way, if you're just rolling in, feel free to let me know how your day is going. I appreciate you all being here and taking the time to to chill. Here we go. Now we got a little bit of a rhythm here. Oh shit. Alright. Take out these scorn, get rid of these screeves. I'm gonna need friends for this part. My lock is far too squishy and I don't have anything heavy duty. Yeah, I don't know really. I've gotten so adept at using a night stalker that I just I don't really know. How I would do this alone with any other class? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Yep. Yep. Okay. At least these scorn don't have shields. Okay, we gotta take out these big gotta take out these big boys. Come back, I'm Hamkara. There we go. Hey. What up? I gotta stop assuming that I can do more than two. Crap. Alright, now we got shield, guys. And of course they're void. Of course they're void. Woo! I wonder if I, I might be able to do this without taking out that other scorn. Oh. Uh, I can do this. We got this. Just have to believe. So close. Direction. Easy peasy. Come on, buddy. First try. First try, baby. Holy shit, Knuckle. Doc. Alright, hold on. I'll read that in a second. What the hell? 
Find a way up fast. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I hope that's a I hope that's a freaking checkpoint. If I have to fight that again because my dumbass jumped off the edge. Doc, I've had a. Okay, good. Had a wild two years of trouble, lost grief, change, and to a lesser extent, balding. Stumbling into your content has really given me vocabulary for my troubles in the info. I need to find support. Thank you. Hey, Knuckle, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for the 50 bucks. That is, uh, that is incredibly generous of you. Go, think they mind if I take their pikes? Oh. Let's go, baby. Woo! Oh, oh that was so close. Oh no, no, come on, go invisible. Damn it. All right. I feel like I've gained a lot of tools to manage my emotions and anxiety from watching your streams for the last six months. I, y'all, you have no idea how honored I am uh, that this stream has that impact on you. Uh, it is why I do this. It is just so, so important to me that all of you have this information and that's delivered to you responsibly let's go guardian a dollar for every 2 hours i watch your content so far wait you've watched me does it show you guys how much time you've spent watching my stream that's kind of cool if so absolutely not a knock on my therapist more on myself because i was resistant but i feel like i've gained more here than from my actual therapy sessions <laughs> I always think it's funny when people say that. Um, you know, I, I take I take that as a compliment. You know, if it means that, if it means that the information's good, that it's relatable, that it's meaningful, then that's awesome. You know. This is absolutely the way to do to do this. Just kind of take my time here. Make sure that I don't do anything stupid. That's really all Destiny is, man. Destiny is just all patience. Okay, I know with a Twitch, you could implement that. No clue on YouTube. Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I, it's kind of interesting. Like, those are analytics that, like, I guarantee you Google has them. Like, I know Google knows how much time you've spent watching my stream. There's no way they don't know that. It's such an easy metric to track. Oh shit, suffocating haze, 14 seconds. Oh shit, go Ryan, go! Go! I hit that by three seconds, chat. Three seconds. Holy shit. I'm sitting here talking about like, you know, make sure you take your time. Ooh, baby. That was close. If it does, I need to know how to see it. Yeah, I, d I have no idea. Oh, that was close. That was so close, man. I will say, if you happen to be new here, um, sometimes people see me playing Destiny and they're like, because this is the first time some of you may have seen me doing this, uh, you are more than welcome 
to ask me questions and whatever while we play this. I say this for some of the noobs to the stream because um, it's kind of like, wait a second, Destiny seems like a game that requires full concentration. And while you may think that, it is not actually true. Uh, I can play Destiny basically in my sleep. through chapter two. I'm actually pretty proud of that run that we just had there on that level. It's pretty good. I'm, oh, I'm back in the... Yeah. Oh, let's go talk to Finch. From what I see on a quick search, there is a way to check overall watch time, but I don't see any way for checking specific channel watch time. Damn. Is your... Yeah, my ghost is a bunny. Uh, and I got that ghost for sol finishing the Prophecy Dungeon solo. It is maybe my favorite achievement that I've done. I've not, I never finished Prophecy solo without dying. But I did finish Prophecy solo, and it felt real good. And I got the bunny shell as a result. And so I would use it with pride. And when I got it, I told myself, like, I'm probably never going to change that ghost shell. I will say I'm not a fan of the fact that they did the same thing here that they did on Europa back when Europa came out, where, like, there's only one spawn point, and you got to travel a bazillion miles. I missed Destiny 2. I got away from the game a year or so ago. Me too, actually. I wish my therapist was a gamer. I picked up gaming to survive a long-term injury I got as a law enforcement officer that disabled me. Darcy, Destiny has been a huge, huge, huge part of my life. Um, to the point that I actually have a Destiny tattoo on my forearm. Um, but I also took some time away. I was not happy with how Destiny played mid to end 2021. So I took a lot of time off and skipped like I think maybe two seasons, two or three seasons. So it's nice to be back playing it again. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, uh... Yeah, me being a gamer helps a lot of times when I have clients that play video games because it's a really good thing to connect on. Ever since I started watching you, I started realizing that no video game character holds their boundaries, right? It's a really hard thing to get out of your mind, Carlos. You realize that like some of the best video games have a protagonist with terrible boundaries. That is one thing that like, if I was still in academia, I would absolutely write about it. That... Uh, Playing video games, you know, people complain all the time about, like, oh, like, you know, violent video games and all this shit. But the reality is, it's not so much about violence. Uh, and to me, the thing that passively gets enforced into people when they play video games is that good things only happen when you have bad boundaries. And that is not true. There are plenty of ways to be a protagonist in your own life and also have good, healthy, solid boundaries. Brandon, good to see you. Happy Thursday. This is Destiny 2. It's a looter shooter. And it's a game that I have put thousands of hours into in my life. Oh, shit. What happened? How come we can't get in? I don't really care. We couldn't unlock the memory of the worm familiar. I wanted that freaking hive go so bad when they were including it in the Uber Deluxe Edition of Witch Queen, but I didn't have the money for it at the time. It is a pretty cool one. Still not talking to people in person, but I feel like online is at least a baby step for me. Hey, that's nothing wrong with that, Love Leopard. I'm glad you're here and that you're talking to us. Master Chief has excellent boundaries, kind of. Not just video games. Most TV movies tend to be the same. It's true. Coder, my dude, it's so good to see you. How have you been, man? Looks rad. That motorcycle thing was sick, too. Yep, Sparrow. Fun little thing to drive around on. 
Destiny's a lot of fun. The one one gripe that I do have about Destiny, though, when you're trying to like pitch it to other people, is that Destiny is a very hard game to get into. It's a very hard game to know what to do when you get into it. Like if you're not if you're not fully immersed in keeping up with it and and don't fully understand the mechanics, it is a game that will like eat you alive with just it's like lore and. You just like you kind of wander around like I don't know what's happening right now. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? And that can be sort of a weird experience. Got stuff in the postmaster. Let's see what we I'm glad they put a postmaster here. 1479. Constantly upgrading too. I'm excited for when I get to 1500 so that I don't have to keep just burning through these damn upgrade modules. Playing Destiny is how I learned that I can't stand playing games that rely heavily on killing bosses for loot. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Played the first one for a bit, but didn't love the obligation to buy DLC and ended up dropping it after exhausting the included content. My frustration with Destiny, one of my frustrations of many with Destiny has been that there is a FOMO model. And there are things that if you don't play the game, and you don't constantly stay in tune with it, you will miss out on. And that really bums me out. I don't like that. Content that you paid for. So you, you, you could pay for all these seasons. And if you don't actually play through them, you lose the content that comes from it. And I'm not a fan of that. And you have to pay extra if you want to burn all the way through the levels toward the end of the season. That model I do not appreciate. I had the same problem getting into Warframe, which I think is the Destiny ripoff. It is, yeah. The game had been out for years, and there was so much content I had to stop playing. I grew up on Doom and Unreal and Half-Life. Getting into this game was easy for me. That makes sense. I didn't realize when I was younger that my habit of trying to emulate video game TV protags was bad because of their actual lack of respect of side characters and no knowledge of personal boundaries. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, Takira. We all do that, right? Like, if you don't actually pay attention to it and understand it, then you're kind of like, you know, that's what heroes do. And that's not necessarily true. Blah, 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 blah. Man, for characters I've spent years of my life interacting with, I really don't care what they have to say. Sadly, how so much of the Battle Pass gaming model has been lately. One thing I respect with Halo Infinite is that they plan on letting players access past seasons, which is great. But I tell you what, 343 needs to really start pumping some stuff out for Halo. Very frustrating. What uh, the lack of content in Infinite. And just kind of how, like, haphazard that entire thing has seemed. Halo is... Halo is frustrating to me. That said, like, I am glad that they're doing it. And they do definitely seem to have the best Battle Pass model of all of them. Hanging in there. Graduated, got a pretty nice job. Some stuff happened around these parts that made it hard to be here. But I check in now. Coder, I'm glad to have you here now, man. Also, I'm glad you got yourself a nice job. Always wonderful to see your name in chat, dude. You say these parts, do you mean around YouTube? Do you mean around the stream, or do you mean like in your personal life? Have you decided the theme for the next lecture? Not yet, Ariels. Um, I do know that like, I know parasocial relationships, trauma, um, performance anxiety. Like, those are ones that come to mind. I've, I've got quite a few, like, in my mind that I'm thinking of doing. It's just a matter of, like, planning them and figuring out how to execute them and all that jazz. Yeah, there will be, there will be more. Don't worry. Last week was not a one-off. I'm going to try to do a mental health topic lecture at least once a month.
Hey, Dr. Mick. Hope you're doing well. Haven't really caught you since your Mass Effect streams, but I love what you do, man. Well, Marksy, it's good to see you, friend. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. And it's nice to see you. Definitely improved it already over the past couple months and are showing initiative to keep following the community suggestions. I'm tentative, but still hopeful. I, I mean, it, Infinite's a lot of fun to play, man. A lot of fun to play. I've, I've definitely slowed on it. All right, here we go. In the apothecary wing. We'll say Bungie did. Bungie never, ever, ever fails with art design. Their Bungie's art and sound team is the greatest in all of gaming, hands down, no doubt. Or so it seemed. So this crystal is a piece of her. It's really unmatched. The amount of care and detail that goes into this is amazing, especially into stuff that like you never even interact with or care about. Just got off the phone with my ex. Oh man, second wave breakup suck. Break up once and be done. Oh, I know. And there, I agree. Uh, but I'm glad you're here, Jordan. I hope maybe being here helps a little bit. Bungie knocked it out of the park this season, I think. We'll see. I hold, I reserve judgment for Destiny now until like midway through the season. If midway through the season, we're still rocking and rolling, I feel good. Like right now, we got so much new shit to do. It's pretty cool. I mean, I enjoyed Beyond Light. Beyond Light was a really solid uh, expansion. the apothecary wing, at least. but then the season model after beyond light dropped it got it's that's where for me it got really stale fish and i have both been in agreement that the weekly events and awards have to be directed whether we play the game or not so by all means i agree there's still fundamental flaws yeah but the core, core gameplay loop is great it's great it does help immensely. Trying to shed six years is hard, but this stream is such a calming experience, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, breakups are brutal, man. Breakups are... Honestly, a mental health topic lecture on breakups would probably be a good one. I feel like breakups comes up regularly enough that it's worth a conversation. Kind of like, why do breakups hurt? What are Dr. Mick's tips for navigating a breakup successfully? What are some do's and don'ts? I'm I'm not opposed to doing something like that. I actually think that could be a pretty beneficial topic. Anytime I do breakups and they show up on like my social media pages, man, that shit blows up. So many of us can relate. Only a handful of hours into the story campaign, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no, I get what you mean, Rosalind. I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, the, the this this area is really cool. I, I really love what they did with this. They managed to take the hive aesthetic, which is ugly as shit, and make it beautiful. And I, I really just I think that's cool that they managed to do that. I know you will definitely grow as a content creator. If you don't mind me asking, does having a bigger audience ever worry you? I'm trying to grow as a content creator, but I'm a bit worried about my own well being if I ever do take off. It's an interesting question, Sekiro. Um, I get asked it frequently, um, which I don't mind answering it again, but like, for me, the stream when I started it was never about numbers so much as it was about the quality of the content I produced. So I have already, through the stream, I have already impacted way more people than I ever imagined I would when I started. Like, I, I really, I, I, I can't really emphasize that enough. I would like to get bigger because I want other people to have the opportunity to learn the stuff that I can teach. I do not really worry about growth because I trust my ability to set boundaries. I trust my mods. I trust that this community is one that 
as it grows stays consistent like when i was on twitch we were getting to a point where we were sitting at like 300 concurrent viewers two to 300 concurrent viewers pretty regularly when i switched to youtube the concurrent viewership dropped uh by quite a bit and i knew that that was going to happen and i'm okay with that and as the stream continues to grow over here, we start to see some of that happen again, where, you know, as the stream gets bigger, there's more people in chat. But at the end of the day, like I do a pretty good job keeping up with it. And I, I know that the content's good. And so having more people seeing it, I think is, is totally great. The thing that kind of bums me out sometimes about getting bigger though, is that I do know that there are some folks that their favorite part about the stream was kind of how cozy and intimate the vibes were here. And so for some people, as the stream has grown, they've kind of fallen out because they preferred when the stream was a place that had, you know, not a lot of people hanging out and it was like this super intimate thing. YouTube kind of rekindled that a little bit in a, in a really cool way. And I respect people who like to be involved in smaller communities. For me, the reason that I have always done this, um, first and foremost, is to bring this information to folks who can benefit from it. You know, folks ebb and flow with how often they're here. I'm always appreciative of people who are here regularly, but I also fully acknowledge that that's not always possible. And I never fault people for you know walking away or if you know you find somebody else that you'd rather watch or whatever. I'm always here, uh, ready to welcome people back with open arms, but. That's a long way of basically saying that like, no, I do not really worry about channel growth, but I do understand why some people do. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that and trying to keep your stream to a, to a size and a vibe that's important to you. All right, Guardian, let's focus. To find a way forward, we need a I still go in Halo Reach campaign regularly and it's definitely aged well. It looks amazing on PC. No, I agree. Reach is a fantastic, fantastic game all around. Just got hit with three meetings tomorrow that were non-existent this morning at work. Any tips for not getting overwhelmed with the extra social interaction? You're already overwhelmed. Do you pay attention to your emotional experiences? Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. You focus on what you can control. Create a plan for how you're going to navigate those meetings and how you're going to take care of yourself. And again, you know, a lot of people like to what if that stuff and they overly focus on things they can't control. Fact of the matter is, those meetings exist. You will be present in them. Focus on what you can. I think that's a structured component of making good content. You want the value of what you're making to be based on yourself, not statistics. Personally, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I took a massive hit on the statistics department when I came over here. But I prefer being over here. I believe in the reason that I switched. And I still, my content, I, I, as I said when I made the switch, uh, I believe in the content I produce. I don't think that my content has to be on one platform. I think my content, it transcends wherever I'm at. In your opinion, what's the best way to help somebody in an emotionally abusive relationship? Be very careful, Afroburger. Understand your limitations. Understand that there is probably danger involved in that and that you could put yourself at risk in getting involved. Tell that person you're available as a support system in whatever way is comfortable for you. Encourage them to get help. Uh, offer to help them plan a way to get out if they're will if you and them are willing to do that but you need to know your limitations getting involved in an emotionally abusive relationship as an outsider is not always a good idea that's something that a professional uh, needs to help with so ask how you can be supportive if it's a friend and hear what they have to say if you can do it do it if you can't set some boundaries i think smaller content creators are more obsessed over their numbers than the fun of creating that certainly can be the case they got an intimate feel of smaller streams it can be a tough line to walk between wanting growth and success in the streamer but also wanting that more close-knit feel and this game i mean seriously we've had we've had off of raids and stuff thousands of people in here before and it still has the intimate and cozy vibes that people have come to expect and i love that so it's just it's just not I don't know I just I don't get too stressed about it you know would I like to you know have more partnerships sure certainly yeah um, would I like to have more eyeballs on the stream so that more free people can learn yes but the beauty of YouTube now is that my VODs don't disappear so 
people can access my content at any time. People can access my playthroughs whenever they want. Um, we're no longer restricted in that way. Like on Twitch, they only lasted for 60 days and they were gone if you, if you weren't there. And that was a real bummer for a lot of people. And so I like doing the live streams over here so people can kind of, they can feel like a part of it no matter when they enter. I also realized though that it makes it easier for people to not show up live because you don't really have to. You can watch the bot at any time, but it's fine. I don't do it for numbers. I, if I had 10 people in here right now, I'd still be here and still be talking and we'd still be having a good time. So. Wrong gun. There we go. God, I feel like you can get the intimate feel of smaller streams. It can be, t oh, let's see, I read that already. It actually helps a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. Halo Reach is still amazing. I still sometimes go in there to play Firefight. Something that Halo Infinite desperately needs. PvE content, yeah. I was really excited for the Halo Battle Pass model and was so disappointed when they still managed to undo all the perks. The better model with grindiness, dude, I know. I mean, it really was like, like really, you know, like you took all the good stuff out of here. What are we doing? All right, I gotta be more careful when I go into that. Sean's not disappearing is a big plus. Love that watching some of the older content is still available. Yeah, Sean, Sean's idea to start uploading like the Death Stranding stuff, uh, I'm really happy about. It's been cool to have people follow along with that on the days where I don't have cyberpunk content to put out. like they spawn infinitely. I feel like I'm playing Call of Duty sometimes. Jesus. Oh, VODs are a lifesaver when Dr. Mick's voice puts you to sleep, right? And this part's not even hard. Like, relative to some of the other stuff. I am struggle busting it. I guess I don't really need. Oh god. Oh no no no. <laughs> Freaking melee lunge. Oh man. Whatever. I'm watching your vibes. The cozy vibe always comes across. From you and your mannerism and the way you carry yourself. I don't have the words for it, but it gives me a real sense of, oh, I can trust this guy. Well, I am grateful for that. And I do not take that for granted. Because uh, that's a very important part of what I do and why I do it. And your trust in me is something that I handle with care. With that trust comes real potential for harm. And, you know, it, it, it kind of connects back to that conversation we were having about um, therapists in the mainstream and how, um, you know, to some extent dangerous that can be. I'm just excited that I got into a PhD in counseling psych with an advisor I love and great funding. I plan to get licensed and get out of academia. Really relieved, though. Sugar, congratulations, first and foremost. 
Uh, I don't blame you for wanting to get out of academia. And I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Uh, it can be really awesome when you get along with your advisor. Uh, that is one of the most under... Uh, how do I want to say this? Most under understood things about a PhD program is that if your advisor sucks and your committee is hard to work with, your life is a living hell. So I'm really glad, and I'm glad you got funding, because that's well-deserved as well. I'm going to go eat something, and I'll, maybe I'll be back. All right. Enjoy whatever you end up eating, love. While I was doing inventory today, I found a pair of earrings I made during your Mass Effect stream. So that's cool. What kind of earrings are they, Phoenix? You should put together a compilation video after you finish a game. So we kind of have that for The Last of Us. Sean did a TikTok compilation video. Um, you gotta remember, I am but one man. And Sean is but one man. Doing a compilation video for playthroughs is really tough. Also, uh, I mean, full disclosure, one of the things that, uh, like, it sounds neat to do a comp. Okay. It sounds neat to do a compilation video, but one of the things that is not as great about that is that it disincentivizes people from watching the playthroughs. You know, you miss a lot of good stuff if you are, you know, only watching. The if you're like, ah, oh, you know, whatever, I'll just wait for the reruns. You know, I'll just wait for the highlight video. You miss out on a lot of stuff. You miss out on a lot of context. So. That's one reason why I'm a little less inclined to do those as well, beyond just how much work that takes. John does a lot of work for this channel. Yes, he does. And we love him for it. Speaking of Sean, make sure that y'all follow Sean on YouTube because on Sunday, I'm going to be joining Sean I'm going to be joining Sean on the Concession Stand podcast. Him and Jared and Micah are going to be with me. I'm going to re-watch Hot Fuzz. And we're going to talk about it. And the reason that I am not doing well here is because I am vastly underleveled for it. Let's see if I can maybe bump this up and that maybe helps me out a little bit here. This is a 1490. Mystery Machine Macaroons. They're kind of an accident. Well, that sounds pretty cool. 76. Two. See if this makes a difference. Do you have an opinion on therapy online app? Better help. No, I do not. I have never used it. My only experience with them is that they will not leave me alone about joining their network, even though I repeatedly tell them I have absolutely no interest in doing so. Um. I have heard people have mixed experiences with it. There are some folks that have said that it was really good, it was better than nothing. There are other folks that have said that they uh, didn't have a great experience and that they felt like it was a waste of their time and money. So, I don't personally, I've never personally used it. And I don't know anybody who uses it. I do know that the compensation plan that they have for therapists really sucks. Uh, that there's sort of a tendency to go for therapists who may not otherwise be like in network somewhere or maybe are struggling to set up a private practice or want to supplement their income. 
And uh, I remember looking at the pricing model for it and thinking to myself, like, yeah, no way. Absolutely no way. A lot of weird requirements on it. Um, again, that's just my experience of it. I... I wouldn't I would not like take a sponsorship from them or anything like that. I mean I run my own practice, so I don't really need to be involved with BetterHelp, but it's just one of those things you gotta be really mindful of your expectations. Uh, because you may get somebody who's a really great fit, you may not. There's no way to know until you get there. Husband and I did point break hot fuzz double feature last week. Highly recommend. I've never seen point break. I I stopped watching Hot Fuzz halfway through it because I hated it so much. I have never been more uncomfortable in a movie than I was watching Hot Fuzz. That entire town is full of people that I hate. And I know that's partially the point of the movie, but holy shit, man. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. God. Yeah, so now there's Hive Guardians, which are not really fun to fight. Well, they are fun to fight, but they also suck. Oh, boy. I looked at better help in Talkspace. I'm not... It's going to be cheaper just... To just not use it and find somebody not on it. Yeah, it's... They come from a good place, but holy shit, dude. There are so many of them. The problem is if I kill this guy and I can't get to his ghost to smash it, then he, he revives. So like I don't want to actually hit this guy and kill him from this far away. I got to get up on him. Alright, pray for me. There we go. Oh, thank God. Oh, man. Better than nothing isn't exactly a glowing review. At times it can be, but yeah. Uh, crying after watching news about the war, just imagining walking up, hearing air sirens is making my heart sink. I should focus more on IRL, but it's so unsettling not to think about the war. It's okay to think about. Um, I know it's weighing heavy on a lot of people's minds. Be very mindful about how often you're consuming the news. I think it's very important for people to remember that the news is often designed to create an emotional reaction from you more so than it is to inform you about what's going on. And if you need to take a step away, just remember that like taking a step away from the news is not making the war any worse or better. So do what you gotta do to take care of yourself because it's a... Uh, and no, it's okay, Kay, to talk about it. Um, we talk about whatever here. It's There's no real restriction on, on topics here, so. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, but it's a thing to just, to realize that, like, you gotta have, you gotta have some personal boundaries around it. You gotta make sure that you're taking care of yourself. As hard as that can be, because sometimes people think, like, well, yeah, but, you know, people who are in Ukraine can't take care of themselves right now. And, like, while that it is certainly true, Our, we have to understand our sphere of influence on this stuff. She wasn't alone. Though I take your point. I can totally relate to being uncomfortable watching a movie. My friends were watching Borat at a Halloween party a while back, and I straight up walked out partway through watching. I can see that. Uh, the only two movies I've ever walked out of, or stopped midway through, were Hot Fuzz and the Mr. Bean movie. 
My dad and I went and saw the Mr. Bean movie when I was a kid, and I wasn't old enough to appreciate the humor of Rowan Atkinson, and my dad does, wasn't into it. So we literally, like, I remember him and I being like, you want to go? You want to leave? Yeah? Okay. And we left. I've, that's the only time I've ever left a theater. I watched Hot Fuzz at Sean's. Or no, no, no. I watched... Where did I watch Hot Fuzz? I don't... Th Sean, I think, thinks that I watched it at the movie theater. And I swear I did not. Like, I swear that I watched Hot Fuzz at his house. And I, like, begged him to turn it off. Sometimes just watching the news can be anxiety-inducing and traumatic even without major disasters. Yes, it can. And it's, again, you got, news is not, I mean, it's news, but it's also not news. Um, it, news is designed to hold your attention. The thing that holds people's attention is fear. It's fear that you're not going to have all the information. Fear that you're going to miss something. We live in a day and age where you can get information. Uh, they need you to be emotionally engaged so that you continue to watch. Not so that you're more informed, so that you watch. And it's important to understand that. Um, because it'll help you set more healthy boundaries with the amount of news you're consuming. Now, we can care about things. I, I am not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that you shouldn't care about what's going on. But you should realize understand the scope the limits of your influence over it and that sacrificing your mental health for things that you have absolutely no control over is not really the way oh my god holy shit I don't think I've ever walked out of a theater. I just sit there and suffer through it if I don't like it. I'd say the closest I've been to walking out of a theater was Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. I have actually still not seen Rise of Skywalker. I have seen Episode 7, and I've seen Episode 8. I saw Episode 8 one time. Hated it. And uh, I have still, to this, to this day, have not watched Episode 9. I have no interest in seeing it. Most recent trilogy to me just doesn't do it. As much as people like to make fun of George Lucas, George Lucas is who brings the Star Wars vibe. Like even this, even like the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett and stuff. I just, I really think it's missing George. I can only imagine what it must be like for him to watch this entire universe that he created uh, be handled by other folks. But, like, I'm not a fan of the Book of Boba Fett. Didn't really do it for me. Mandalorian's okay. Things are so easily accessible and shareable. Pretty much all social media are affected. I was browsing TikTok earlier, and it went from funny cat video to somebody live-streaming themselves, packing their stuff with sirens blazing outside. Yeah, man. Social media is a trip. I had to leave to take a walk last week when my husband was watching Kimmy on the morning. There was a real visceral rape recording he had no idea about, and I was blindsided and really triggered. I that I have a really strong stomach. I've seen a lot of stuff on the internet. Um, rape is something that if it's in movies or TV or whatever, I get I get really uncomfortable. Um, I just something about it uh that i just I, I mean i can dissect it and figure out you know, what it is but like i just that is one thing that when i see it represented particularly if it's represented quote unquote well um really brutal i i just i i struggle with it immensely like i couldn't watch the girl with the dragon tattoo for example um it was too intense for me I had to turn, I literally had to turn the movie off. So I actually, I guess that would be another example of a movie that I had to turn off midway through. But not because it was a bad movie, because 
of what was happening here. You have a favorite Star Wars movie? Mine's Revenge of the Sith. I've written several fanfics for the prequel era. Okay, so I... I, I know that it's so cliche to say this, but like I really like Empire Strikes Back. Um, always really loved that one. I was enthralled with Hoth when I was a kid. Thought Hoth was the coolest thing with the walkers. And all that. Um, I would say, though, that... I don't know, because I love the prequels because I love Emperor Palpatine. I, Palpatine is my favorite character in all of Star Wars and probably all of, like, any fiction. Um, I... I absolutely love him. I think that uh, episode three, two is two to some extent, but especially three is great because you get to see the way that Palpatine basically takes everyone for a ride. And I, I have always thought that that was super interesting. I'm dead. This is crazy. So, I don't know. I, I'd say, like, if you gave me one one Star Wars movie to watch for the rest of my life, it would be... It would probably be Empire Strikes Back. This is, this is bananas. Outrageous, man. Holy crap. There's a freaking ogre? What are we doing? Absolutely based for that. The Empire Strikes Back just does something for me that the other movies don't. It's great. Have you watched Breaking Bad? I have not. Playing Destiny? What's up, Anonymous? I am indeed. Revenge of the Sith also just a good tragedy on its own. Love that movie. No, I agree. It's a great movie. I'm 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 a fan. I like the prequels. Oh, what's up? Lightbearer Knight? Piece of shit. If you like Palpatine, I think you'd like Dune. I hear that all the time. And the problem is don't spend a lot of time watching movies and TV. So, it's tricky because, like, I'm good. Like, the fact that I have to watch Hot Fuzz this week is already, like, that's, that's enough movie for me. Tyler and I just finished the campaign this morning, now writing my last paper for Intro to Psych. Nice! And, uh, I actually like Phantom Menace too, Spence. I loved the pod racing when I was a kid. Like, Phantom Menace came out when I was basically the same age as Anakin. So, for me, it was just, there was something really relatable about having Anakin. I do think, though, that Anakin's relationship with Padme is weird. She is just so much older than him. And she like saw him when he was like a little boy. And I just I don't know. That 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 to me has always been a little strange, but you know what? To each their own. It's a galaxy far, far away, different rules. Read the books? Oh, jeez. You think it you think I'm bad about watching movies and T V shows. There is, uh, there is no book watching for this guy, or book reading for this guy. I, I am, 
I am the opposite of an avid reader. Pod racing was so cool as a kid. Really was. Plus, the pod racing video game was fantastic. You really have to cut two hours out of your schedule to watch a movie you don't like. Yeah, which I don't want to do. All right, there we go. We're cruising along here. This is going swimmingly. Auto-loading host through one for all. Not interested. We're getting there. Low and steady. Oof. All right. Book watching. Yeah, my, you know, sometimes I mix up words while we're doing this. This is definitely the apothecary ring. Somehow, it feels even creepier. Ooh, do you have a favorite weapon or weapon type that you prefer during combat? Um, I don't know, man. It depends kind of on the point in time we're in. I I have always liked auto rifles, but it has been rare for me to find an auto rifle that works well. Uh, so this Arctic Haze is great. Submachine guns are fun. Uh, I mean, I love scout rifles, but scout rifles have really not gotten a ton of love from Bungie in Destiny 2. Like, Vision of Confluence was my absolute favorite gun in all of Destiny 1. And... Uh, I, I do miss that gun. I actually think that it's in Destiny 2 now because of the Atheon strike being back, but or Atheon raid. But I, I'm a big fan of like assault rifles. I like anything that allows me to like change shit together. Like the reason I like this gun is because of, it's got subsistence and uh, dragonfly on it, and so it's a lot of fun to use. Anarchy is a lot of fun. Are you doing this on Legendary? Yes, I am. I have done the entire campaign up until this point on Legendary Solo. Also, I got all the way to the final boss in the Gallahorn Strike on my own. And it got real late. So I had to, I had to stop the day I was doing it. I didn't realize how long it was going to take. Already upsetting enough seeing a tiny bit of coverage I have. Told my mother to please turn it off when she called earlier today and was getting worked up. Yeah, you gotta have the limits. Absolutely. I like this story, but honestly, Qui-Gon Jinn is my favorite character. Good old Qui-Gon. I was not expecting Liam Neeson to die that fast. Like when I saw that he was cast as Qui-Gon, I was like, oh shit. He'll probably be around for a while. Nope. Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Phantom Menace. I still love the whole idea of Darth Jar Jar. Like, I really wish George Lucas would come out and be like, yo, Jar Jar is absolutely the Phantom Menace. Like, that whole theory about Jar Jar being the real antagonist of, of Star Wars is just amazing. And if people do not know what I'm talking about, you really gotta just Google Darth Jar Jar. You 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 get absolutely need to read it. One of the coolest fan theories I've ever seen, probably in any work of fiction. Never thought I'd switch away from gnawing hunger, but the new auto rifle crate is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm still using my Arctic Haze. Gnawing Hunger is a good, uh, is a solid gun too. I pause is an amazing movie. I hope you enjoy it rewatching it. We'll see. You're gonna find out on Sunday when I talk to Sean and Micah and Jared about it. Is that like? But it's tainted somehow. 
forgot to tell you yesterday, but the mission you did in Cyberpunk 2077 was the ballsiest execution of that mission I've ever seen. Super slick. Thank you. I felt really good about that last night. I felt really good about that last night. I won't put any spoilers in chat because I know there's folks here who don't want it spoiled, but um, there was a mission last night that went exactly, almost exactly according to plan, and it was great. Really enjoyed it. Uh, free meals, that is actually something we've done in the past. Uh, we actually, I have a Destiny clan that folks are welcome to join if they want. It's called Coconut Man Approved. It's actually a pretty active clan. Uh, but you all are welcome to join that. But we have done raids on stream before. There's a period in time where I had thought it would be cool to be a Destiny content creator, but then it just kind of fell out of fashion with me, so... The bot. Oh, that's one of those fun bots. Yeah, but I mean, but but Rosalind, what if uh, what if people want hot girls and boys to video chat with them? I mean, I, I gotta make sure that people know what their options are. I'll bop it. In a minute. Get my triangle. through cyberpunk right now trying to beat it so i can watch you stream but i appreciate the no spoilers yeah no, you're welcome i uh yeah, i don't want it i don't want it ruined for anybody oh shit i thought that was the door oh all right bye bye bot Is done. You look at this like with subsistence on this thing. Just fire it forever, and then you get auto rifle. I actually started to get really into um, like combining mods and stuff in this game in a way that I like when they started doing armor mods. I actually really hated it, and I grew to really appreciate it when I was trying to like solo dungeons and stuff. And it's really hard once you find a setup you like to break out of it. People want randomware and malware infecting their network. Sure, have fun with that bull. Yeah, but hot girls and hot, hot, hot men and women, Rosalind. Think of the boobs, you know? Hey, Mia. Welcome back. Your Golden Knights February newsletter is here. Cool. It's February 24th, but that works. Alright, parkour. Here we go. Let's see what we have here. I didn't need to put that rally banner down, but I did anyway. What up, homies? Looks like we're interrupting something. The wizard overseeing all this. Oh shit! Freaking moths. Howdy. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all the pretty colors. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I went backwards. No. That felt so good, too. Kiro, have a good one, friend. Thanks for being here. 
Appreciate you guys coming out for the reasonable hour stream. Boom. Show yourself. Immune phase. That's the. Just, I get so tired of immune phases. Oh my god. So many of them. Get our health back here. How much longer you got? Uh. Not too much longer, Mia. I would say maybe like a half hour, if that. Probably finish this mission and then, or like this mission string. way to keep chat on live chat i have to change it every time i load the stream unfortunately no it's one of the stupidest things that youtube does everybody bitches about it i cannot believe that youtube hasn't done anything about it yet i think top chat is the dumbest thing ever i don't even understand why it exists in the first place but unfortunately no you got to change it every time it really sucks Already 4 p.m. I better get a snack. Yeah. Do that. If this guy kills me, I'm going to be so mad. Oof. All right. I'm not even 1490, and we're just rocking and rolling here. All right. I got shoulders. That's important. Definitely needed that. Are your ears stretched? It looks like you have plugs. They are. My ears are currently stretched at a six. And I'm actually really looking forward to getting them stretched to a four here, probably sometime in March. And then I think I'm going to stop at four. All right, let's keep moving. So far, so good. bolts you didn't even know I was on top chat and set alive yeah I try to have a reminder posted with nightbot so that people remember to change it but it can be Hard to remember. Oh boy. Oh no! Shit, man. Holy shit. Can't believe that worked. I'm at double zero. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever go double zero, but appreciate the compliment. 
Funny because it didn't even stop the hot boys and girls from getting through. I know, right? Oh, man. Oh, good. A light bearer knight. My favorite. Oh, this is where Jared was the other night when I was uh, when I was watching him. Point out, did that faster than Jared? Oh, I really thought that was gonna get me my anarchy. Easy peasy, baby. I know he did. He was on for a long time. You don't want your ears to match those, the tribal stretching? No, I do not. I'm going to do my neck, though. I thought I was content to double zero, but I eventually ended up at three quarters. Nice. Now I buy myself cute, expensive plugs, so I have a reason to not go bigger. Smart. Also, Brian, good to see you, bud. All right. 1,500. There we go, baby. There we go. <coughs> nice to see some 1500s drop. Go. Yeah, get anarchy to 1500. Feels good, man. Feels real good. Jared ended up streaming for eight hours. Sir, you're tall enough. Yeah, I'm six feet. Six feet. Give me this crystal. Yeah. Got it. Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. Who cares? Don't care what she has to say. Didn't even stop. Man, it's getting hot in my room, man. Hot. Also, Kavoozle, thank you for becoming a member. I missed that. Appreciate you re-upping that. Altar of Reflection. Itching to size up from two. Waiting on the jewelry to come in. Goal is one half inch unless I feel good with them being smaller. Man, I one half inch. Yeah, good for you. I I don't even I don't know. I don't I don't even think I would like what my ears would look like if they were stretched that far. I just sort of like having um, I like the ability to have like plugs that take up a, a decent amount of the plugs that take up a decent amount of the earlobe and I actually initially I didn't like the idea of having tunnels, but I have grown on tunnels like I would actually be really interested to see what my ears look like with tunnels my parents hate tunnels they hate them my mom I think would want to kill me if uh, if I got tunnels but you know let's take them out and replace them right I am looking forward to stretching them though 
into getting different plugs in these. The, these plugs that I have in are just kind of like stock little starters. The device was some sort of super weapon. I want some nicer ones. The scorn clearly have an appetite for destruction. But at whose behest, we do not yet know. Mm. We'll keep starving them until we figure out who's behind all this. Thanks, I borrow. 15. We hit we hit a stopping point with this, didn't we? Actually, no. Dr. Mick Live logo plugs. Oh jeez. That would be ridiculous, Rosalind. Okay. It's a little bit of a shorter stream this afternoon, chat, but uh, I do gotta go. I don't want to start something and then get where I'm wrapped up and can't get out and it's too late. So uh, I'm going to roll out. I know I started late, so we got an hour less today than we would normally have. But I really do appreciate y'all coming out and hanging out. I hope this was a nice way to spend your afternoon. Um, and that you enjoyed some of the conversations that we had. And that it was just you know, a nice way to get you through a couple hours in your afternoon. I will be off tonight, and I will be back tomorrow. Friday with the fellows is tomorrow, so we'll have that. Saturday is the Delta V poster stream, and also the launch of Diagnostic Lullabies, which is album number three. So if you like this music on stream, that's going to launch at midnight on the merch store. So it will be, I think, a really cool stream, and I'll finish off by playing some guitar. And then Sunday we'll be back to Cyberpunk. So we got a little bit of a of a lull between the Cyberpunk streams, but it gives people a chance to catch up if they've been wanting to catch up. So uh, really appreciate y'all. Make sure that uh, if you haven't already that you follow me on all the social media that's there. If you became a member today or if you re-upped your membership, thanks for doing that. If you sent me a tip, Knuckle Basket, thank you so much for the tip. I really appreciate, or the Super Chat, I really appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate all the financial support of the stream. Thank you for purchasing merch, those of you that have done that. So, yeah, use tonight to catch up on anything that you've fallen behind on. And uh, Sunday we're also doing the Hot Fuzz Concession Sam podcast with Sean. So we've got a good finish of the week coming up. As I always say to all of you before I leave, and I do mean it to each and every one of you, I hope you say it to yourselves as I say it to you. You matter. Your experiences are valid. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are. And I will catch you tomorrow. Adios, friends.